Hey everyone, I just wanted to quickly review and expand on the uh, discussion from today about Tourette's syndrome and the genetic relationship to obsessive compulsive disorder. So first of all, um, the main point that you need to know from all of this is just how researchers can, without sequencing people's genomes or even knowing what genes are involved, figure out that there is a genetic link between two diseases. And the way to do that um, is to identify probands, that is just any individual, um, the first individual that you identify in a family, you call the proband. Um, you, so you identify probands with one disease and then look to see if there are relatives that have the other disease. So for example, um, what, we, what I mentioned in class but, hasn't, but I didn't show is that um, if there are probands with Tourette's syndrome, um, who do not have major depressive disorder, then their relatives are no more likely to have major depressive disorder than anybody from the general population. And so that indicates that there is probably not um, the same genes that put somebody at risk for those two diseases. Um, there is a more complicated explanation for why um, major depressive disorder is is at a higher frequency in people with Tourette's syndrome than without. Um, but the thing that you should spend more of your attention focusing on is how you can prove that there is a common set of genes that give rise, that increase one's risk for both OCD and Tourette's or for any other disease, any other pair of diseases. So in this case, um, they identified probands with Tourette's syndrome, some uh, 14 of whom are probands with Tourette's with uh, plus OCD. The other 13 have Tourette's without OCD, and another five come from adoptive families. Um, they don't specify whether they have OCD or not because um, the purpose of that is just to show that it's not 100% environmental, that, it, that, the, that it's really the biological relationship between these probands and their relatives. Um, rather than the sort of shared environment that the adoptive individuals have with their, their adoptive relatives. So in any case, if we find a group of protip bands with Tourette's plus OCD, and we find that some of their relatives have OCD but not Tourette's, that is a little hard to interpret. It's possible that there's some common set of genes that give rise to risks, that give, that give rise to an increased risk of both, or it's possible that these probands with Tourette's plus OCD are really just unlucky and have a set of bad genes that put them at risk for OCD and another set of bad genes that put them at risk for Tourette's, and then because those relatives only share 50% of the genes with, uh, with the uh, probands, um, maybe, those pro maybe the relatives that get OCD only just got that subset of genes that put them at risk for OCD. So this is not terribly conclusive. However, if we have a proband that has Tourette's without OCD, and we find that their relatives are at an increased risk of OCD without Tourette's, then that tells us that whatever, and if we do this across a large enough number of individuals, that it's not just because of random chance, um, then uh, um, then what we can find, conclude from that, is that the same genes that manifested as Tourette's in one individual manifest as OCD in another individual, um, and therefore we can conclude that there's a single set of genes that, or at least a largely overlapping set of genes, that give rise to both Tourette's and OCD. Um, conversely, we could have found a bunch of individuals with OCD and not Tourette's, and then look to see if their relatives are more likely to have Tourette's without OCD. That's also been done, and it does hold true as well, um, and, uh, uh, and is, a, and is a, exactly the same idea, an equally valid way of doing this. Um, in fact, for any two diseases, um, a very clear way to tell whether they share common mechanisms genetically is to find individuals with disease A, and then look to see if they're, uh, uh, with, who don't have disease B, and then look to see if their relatives have disease uh, B, but not disease A. Um, and if we see that those are, that, that there is an increased risk, and that tells us there's a single common set of genes that gives rise to risk for both. If not, then it tells us that there might be something more complicated and environmental going on between uh, comorbidities that we might otherwise see. Um, we're going to talk um, uh, about one 
example of a gene that does not follow this pattern and does not give a risk of OCD, but does give a near guarantee for Tourette's syndrome uh, in the next class period. But for now, this is the main thing to be thinking about.